Located at the top of Wisconsin, Bayfield County is considered by many of the locals to be the wild side of the dairy state. This is a place of majestic beauty with national treasures that include the Apostle Islands, the natural wonders of its sea caves, and rugged sandstone cliffs that frame the clear waters of Lake Superior. This is Bayfield County Wild. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Nancy Christopher. And I'm Mary Motif, Director of Bayfield County Tourism. Happy New Year to all of our listeners. And you know, there's a lot to be happy about in Bayfield County, particularly for those who love to cross-country ski and go snowshoeing. This area is a hub for outstanding Nordic trails. Tell us about what makes such great skiing up here, Mary. Sure. You know, two of the main things that make it such a great cross-country skiing destination are lots of public land and dedicated volunteers. We have an incredible amount of national forest up here, as well as county forest, and it makes for incredible skiing. Um, The terrain is varied, it's gorgeous, and it's well-maintained. And we have a lot of different volunteer groups that partner with landowners, whether it's public or private landowners, to maintain nine different Nordic ski trail systems in Bayfield County. But one that is a little bit different is Mount Ashwa Bay. It's a nonprofit organization that runs the hill. It's the Ashwa Bay Outdoor Education Foundation, and they have incredible trails there as well. But they actually have not only volunteers, but paid staff that are dedicated to making that a really great place. They also have something you don't think about up here, and that's downhill skiing as well as cross country. And here to tell us about it is the operations manager, Doug Olson. Welcome, Doug. Thank you. Hey, Doug, you're relatively new to this position, but not completely new to the area. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up at Mount Ashwa Bay as the new operations manager. It's an interesting story because I grew up skiing at Ashwa Bay and, you know, started there when I was five years old, literally 50 years ago last season. Nice. Um, Because of my experiences at Ashwa Bay, and this has happened to a lot of local kids what you learn at Asha Bay are really, really good skiing skills. And then because it's such a small, family-oriented area, you learn some very good people skills as well. There are a number of kids from Asha Bay that have taken jobs at ski areas in the West as instructors. They show up for the first day, you know, and they see how well these kids ski, and then they see how well they talk to other people and, like, you're in, you know, it's, it's, it's a simple transition. So is that what happened to you? That's literally what happened to me. And I worked out in Colorado for 20 years in the ski industry there. And then have always wanted to get back here because, you know, I miss Lake Superior and I miss rain in the summer and, and it's just Bayfield's a beautiful little town. So this job opportunity came up at Asheville Bay as operations manager. And because of the experiences I had in the ski industry, not just as an instructor, but actually putting on events and, and race events got to know what what is food and beverage about what is snowmaking about what is patrol about so had a lot of experience in those different areas sort of made me qualified for the Asheville Bay job and I applied and got accepted and here we are it's so great to have you here I really enjoy it well and it's a great time to be in Bayfield County too how many inches of snow is there up there right now We had a great snowstorm in December that it literally snowed 30 inches overnight. And then it snowed again. Yeah. And (laughs) And again. And and, and it just seemed to keep (laughs) doing that. it's not stopping. Yeah. So as far as the snowpack out in the forest, it's literally between your upper thighs and your waist. Very, very deep. Wow. Um, And then the snowpack on the hill, of course, that gets compacted more. And on our Nordic trails, of course, it gets compacted a little more. So we have anywhere from a foot and a half to three feet of good solid snowpack. In places where we've made it, there's even more, but we're really looking good for the rest of the season. You really are, and there's lots to do up there. Can you tell us what people can experience at Ashwa Bay? Well, alpine skiing, of course, but we're really trying to push our Nordic skiing trails. We have over 40 kilometers of Nordic trails that are groomed by a volunteer group called Bayfield Nordic, and the agreement with them in Ashwa Bay is they groom in the trails we maintain and put fuel in their equipment and it's a great arrangement they have equipment that's ready to go they don't have to worry about maintaining it they don't have facilities for it so our grooming is spectacular our trails are unbelievable the geology there the forest there is unlike anything else in bayfield county we also have a fat bike trail and snowshoeing and ski joring too right and ski joring as well we have a designated dog trail A designated dog trail. Tell me more about that. We have mixed user groups, and 
you know, some skiers don't like dogs on the trails and some dogs don't like skiers on the trails and some mix <laughs> quite well. So we have a designated route. With the amount of snow we have right now, it's hard to walk a dog on a road and you can't get out in the forest with your dog. So to have a designated trail that's groomed and packed, your dog can get out there and turn himself loose, you know, and, and you're not worrying about cars or anything like that. So it's really great and gets a lot of use. Do you have to ski with your dog or can you snowshoe with your dog? You can ski with your dog, you can snowshoe with your dog, okay. or just walk with your dog. Nice. Well, wow, that's great. So what about special events? Is there anything to look forward to? We have our Summit Ski Race, which is first weekend in February. Everybody calls it the pie race because volunteers and, and people that put the event on bake a tremendous amount of pies and treats and cookies, and they love it. You can't walk out of there without taking something home. There's door prizes and things like that. So, But the pies are the prize? The pies seem to be the prize. Um, <laughs> I have not seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it, and everybody's talking about it. We're trying to do more events. As a recreation area, we have an obligation to create events that put people in hotel rooms and put them in restaurants. So that's something we're striving to do. We are working with some lodging partners and we're trying to get their rooms rented in, you know, early season, like in December, we had snow cover then where other areas may not have that down in Milwaukee, for instance. So, you know, a family could come up and rent rooms, do a full weekend of skiing and get reasonable lodging rates. Well, it's a family friendly place and it's very affordable. Yes. As far as the Alpine side of things and Nordic, anybody under nine is free of charge. There's a $5 rental if you're aged four to 10, I think. That is super affordable. But it's always going to be a ski area where you can drop your child off in the morning, they can meet their friends, and they can ski all day, and you can pick them up at four. And I can and, attest to that. I spent yeah many, many uh, trips up there with the kids and... Sometimes I would hang out and get work done in the chalet, and then sometimes I would have to drop them and run errands. Yeah, and there's other parents around. The ski patrol is very proactive in working with kids, and it's a really safe, family, fun area to ski. And the kids love it because there's a grill there. They can get French fries. and Yeah, it's, you know, French fries make the world go around. Right. So, and, <laughs> and that and a pizza slice. So Plus, they learn to ski early on, and that's always a great thing to do. They learn to ski early on. We have several programs called the MAD Ski Program. is Mount Asher Bay Development Ski Program where it's very affordable for a kid to get lessons. And there is a lot of fun in just being on your own and figuring things out. But you just get a little bit of guided discovery with some of our instructors. And then, you know, from there, it's a natural progression to join, you know, the high school ski team or the high school snowboard team. We're all about youth. You know, we have youth nights on Friday nights. And that's $11. You can get on the BART bus in Ashland right out of school, come up to Asha Bay on a Friday night, and ski till 9 o'clock, and then take the bus back home. So, Doug, you talked about the um, Summit Ski Race. Are there more races or other events coming up? There's a high school race there that's just coming up in a couple of weeks. We have the King of the Mountain Race. So K and King of the Mountain, isn't that, don't you have different age brackets for that? Different age brackets for King of the Mountain, but ultimately the end of the day there's the fastest male and the fastest female okay and then and we have chairman of the board which is the weekend before that which is snowboarding only awesome so very fun those are pretty local events but it is a lot of information to take in so how can people yes. learn more about mount ashwa bay and the trail conditions mount bay.org for sure and then our Facebook page is... Mount Ashwa Bay Ski and Recreation yep, Area? Mount Ashwa Bay Ski and Recreation Area. I'm on it so much updating that I don't even recognize the title anymore. <laughs> That's okay. And we'll put all that information in our show notes. Thanks, Doug. You know, we talked briefly about the dog-friendly trails for snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. But if you don't have dogs, you can also watch some fantastic sled dog racing. So when we come back, we'll have some special guests to talk to you about two different sled dog races that take place in Bayfield County. We hope you'll stay with us. Home of the annual Barstool Races in February, the Black Bear Inn and Restaurant in Drummond has been a gathering place for locals and tourists since 1948. Experience our inventive cuisine, attentive service, and friendly atmosphere. Our extensive menu includes burgers, sandwiches, Italian dinners, steaks, fish, and chicken. There's a different dinner special every night of the week and all-you-can-eat spaghetti every day. Come and see what makes us one of the most popular restaurants in the Northwoods. There are also three rooms available for rent at the inn that are very affordable, with two double beds in each room. Find the Black Bear Inn and Restaurant on Facebook to find out more. Welcome back. 
There are two popular sled dog races coming up in February. Jen Dale is here to talk about the area's original race in Bayfield called the Apostle Island Sled Dog Race. And Rob Lombard is joining us to talk about the Northern Pine Sled Dog Race. Let's start with the Apostle Islands race. When is it and what's it all about, Jen? So this race, uh, it starts, it's always the first weekend in February of every year. We try not to change that. That allows area mushers to, a lot of times they like to do a circuit. And some other races, they are have a little more issue with the level of snow that they can get. We never have a lack of snow. Most years we get tons of lake effect snow. This year in particular, we got just swamped in December. And so there should be no problem with trail pack and we shouldn't have any issues getting the trails all packed. How many teams are expected to race? Uh, Each year it varies a little bit. On average, we see anywhere from about 45 to 65 teams. Nice. That's a nice amount. And this is the 25th year for this event. Do you have any of the history to share about it, or what makes the, the event so popular that it's been going on for 25 years? I think the biggest... The biggest draw is just how beautiful it is up here. People have come to know our area as one of the most scenic routes. Because we get so much snow, we do have steep hills that offer challenges, but in some ways it's soft trails. Not in soft, like it's mushy for the dogs to run on, but it's not quite so taxing as some trails that are over rocky bases. We basically have sand or clay base. So it allows for more gentle sloping hills. And then we also get scenic views of the lake. There's several spots along the trail that if you're not too busy watching your dogs and you take a look up, you'll get glimpses of the islands. It is really a peaceful feeling when you're out there and after the dogs have settled down and it's quiet and you're just literally swooshing through the forest and then getting the glimpses of those lake views. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just awesome. I've raced in it for, I think this might be, might even be the 10th year. And once, yeah, once you get through the starting shoot and everything calms down, everybody spreads out, then it is. It's just, you're just out with your dogs on the trail and that's all it is. So speaking of the start, that is the exciting part for people who come and watch is seeing the dogs and how excited they are as they're getting ready to race. Do you want to talk a little bit about spectators and what they can do? So the the best place is to come to the start line. Usually the biggest teams go out first. We have a 10 dog class. Usually that's a little bit lower in participation, just a handful. And then we have an eight dog class, a six dog class, and then a family fun rec race. That's up to six dogs. They're all really fun to watch take off. You can actually watch them all, and then we have a spectator checkpoint that you're actually able to watch the start, go to the checkpoint where both the eight dog team and the 10 dog teams come through there, and they come through that point twice, which is really neat. You can watch pretty much most of that and get back to watch people coming in at the end. They're close enough. They're within just a few miles of each other. Very cool. And the dogs are barking like crazy and jumping in the air, and it really is a spectacle. Do you guys do like the bonfire at the start and things like that? Yes, yes. So there's always a bonfire at the start. There's usually food. Different vendors come in, varies each year. And then at the spectator checkpoint, there's a a bonfire there, and it's usually more local people come, and they have like hot dogs and, and brats and whatnot. Kind of a little party atmosphere, I hear. It is. Are there other events taking place that weekend that kind of tie in with the race? You know, uh, during the weekend, there each evening, there's um, something related to the race going on. Like the first night is the musher meeting that the public is welcome to come to as well. Usually that's where we have quite a few volunteers that come in and help with the race. We need them. It's not possible to put this on, and it's so helpful to have so many people come in. There's usually a spaghetti feed that night, and then... Saturday night after the first day of races, usually we get some guest speaker that comes in. Sunday, it pretty much wraps up after the race. There's a quick award ceremony for the mushers. And then usually most mushers are trying to get home that night and get their dogs into their kennels. Sure. Makes sense. Where can people sign up to be a volunteer or just find out more about the races? So if you just go to the Bayfield Chamber, there's a link to the Apostle Islands sled dog race right there. And then there's a whole, I think it's called volunteerism package that you can sign up for. Awesome. And that's bayfield.org for that website. All right. Awesome. Thank you. 
How about the Northern Pine Sled Dog Race, Rob? When and where does that take place? This year it's going to be February 15th, just after Valentine's Day. It's a good date to remember. It's uh, taking place at the Northern Pines Golf Course and Event Center, just west of Iron River on the airport road is where you take that off of Highway 2. Is there anything different or unique about this race? Oh, yes. There's several things that are unique to our race. Most dog races are a two-day event. Ours, we concentrated on one day for a couple reasons. We wanted to kind of make it a little bit easier to get volunteers to deal with one day. And the mushers, actually, we got pretty good feedback last year from the mushers who raced that felt like it was uh, one less hotel room, one less day of gas and dropping dogs out of dog boxes instead of being in their own houses. So that's one big difference. Uh, The other difference is really the Northern Pines Golf Course Event Center is a warm place to be. Most dog races occur, the starts are out in a a parking lot or maybe a field even to be able to accommodate all the many dog trucks that are, they take up a lot of space, the teams do. But the ability to go into a, a large enough building to get warm was a major feedback that we got from the mushers last year when we asked them what they liked, and uh, also the spectators, plus there's food there. Right, I can attest to that. It was really, really awesome to be able to watch the race. You don't see all of it from from the event center, but um, you get to see a lot of it, and to have that ability to get in and warm up and grab some food. I think I had the best biscuits and gravy I've ever had that day. Uh, It was really awesome food. Yeah, not, not typical to have a breakfast option either. Usually it's uh, some burgers or chili, and it, there's just they had a great selection there. Yeah, they did a great job. So how fast do the dogs go? Yeah, that's a, another unique thing to our race. It's a sprint race format. So sprint races are typically about a mile of distance per dog in the team is typically the format. So if it's a four-dog race, it's usually around four miles. Ours we, were a little bit longer. But those dog teams will travel up to 20 miles an hour average speed during that race, and the open class especially. Now, last year we had some really heavy snow conditions just before the day of the race that we groomed, but it still made it a little softer. And even with that, the teams were averaging over close to 18 miles an hour, which, you know, if you think about that, try to get yourself to go 20 miles an hour with a snowmobile down a snowmobile trail that's windy it's a challenge so it's uh it's pretty exciting it is absolutely you know I'm just envisioning are there any tight corners are there spots that uh people have to be aware of and do you get people tipping over at all oh yeah yeah we had a a hairpin turn last year and and this is a place spectators can go see uh, watch teams too out there that uh, there were some teams tipping over and uh, the dog teams actually uh, kind of getting away from them and the, the volunteers out there helped out in them scenarios. But we've made some improvements this year. So the hairpin turns are gone. The mushers are going to like. But we do have some, uh, we have a new bridge this year that crosses a creek that has some steep decline to it and then a steep incline after it that'll be challenging for them that crosses the Muskeg Creek. So it's, it's beautiful and scenic for them too. But yeah, the, especially the longer teams, the open teams with 14 dogs are, you know, that's 60 feet of dog team in front of your sled. There's times where they're going around corners and they can't see their front dogs. Oh my gosh. That's a little scary actually, not knowing what's ahead. Yeah, I think we, we question how crazy the drivers are of those teams <laughs> at times. How many different races will there be as part of the event? We have four different classes. Uh, Right away in the morning is our mid-distance class, we call it, which is when you start getting over that mile per dog team, it starts to get classified as a mid-distance. But ours is relatively short. It's a 26-mile race that uh, eight dog teams and less will compete in. Then we have a four-dog class that starts uh, after their start, but they'll be out on the trail at the same time. Okay. Then we have a six-dog class as well that will go out. And then the Open, which is the, the premier event that's in the afternoon. Um, and we've this year done a little jockeying with uh, the schedules to make it the most spectator appealing as possible so that there's as few lulls between the dog teams leaving and coming back as possible. So it should be exciting from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. for spectators this year. 
Awesome. Did you say that there were other places for spectators to be able to see parts of the race other than at the actual event center? Yes. Yeah, we have at least three road crossing locations where you can drive out, and we'll have those on the maps at the event center for spectators to find their unique spots to, to watch the teams out on the trails. But like you said, the event center is a great place to watch them. They've it's another very unique thing to our race that you can see almost a half mile of the teams going out and we actually send them out and circle them right back by the event center just so people can watch them that's awesome it is such a great location what other types of activities are going on during the races the iron river fish hatchery actually brings snowshoes to our location and lets people use them for free so we pack a little trail so families can come and, and snowshoe if they've never tried it before it's a great way to see if you want to do this and besides that angie's bakery does some face painting for free for the kids oh that's awesome yeah she's pretty good at it she's a good artist as well as a good confectionist i guess right i think i remember her having some bakery items there as well yeah yeah get the kids sugared up and get some paint on their face (laughs) and then uh, get outside and work it off right where could people learn more uh, about either how to sign up to participate in the race or volunteer or become a sponsor? We point everybody to our website, which is Northern Pines SDR, short for sled dog race.com. So Northern Pines SDR.com. We have both volunteer forms there. We have sponsorship forms too. We we're, we're definitely need some funds to c- keep the race going. So any, any uh, donations would be greatly appreciated. And uh, also the schedules and the registration forms for the mushers are on there as well as some great aerial footage of the of the race nice rob tell me a little bit more about those aerial photos who's out there doing that and and what do they look like yeah we've been lucky and we've got them again this year again it was air fox photography he has donated his services to the race he just uh, appreciates that and wants to help so much um, for it but a very unique thing And, and go to our website and check out those the footage of it it gives you a taste of why you should come watch these teams Uh, you can see them going through the course through the woods Um, in fact it gained some attention to the national level we actually got contacted by the uh, sprint race championship organization wow for isdra about potentially holding the championship race at our location oh my goodness yeah due to some to that because of the aerial photos Um, we're not quite ready that we're 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 slowly building and and need to get a little more comfortable with the race for a couple years before we're ready to commit to something like that but it's a special treat that's a great goal awesome well thank you very much uh rob for joining us and and sharing some info about the race with us yeah thank you for the opportunity and please everybody come and watch it's a great family event and it's free thanks to you as well jen good luck with this year's race thank you Coming up next, Nancy joins me to ring in the new year with some great events to attend in January, so don't go away. Bodine's Resort is located on the beautiful shoreline of Lake Superior on Shawamigan Bay near the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. Featuring newly constructed cabins that are open year-round, Bodine's Resort has been in the business of welcoming guests to enjoy the best that Bayfield County has to offer for over 80 years. Whether you want to ice fish in front of your cabin, snowshoe under towering pines, snowmobile, or cross-country ski, Bodine's Resort is the perfect place for your next winter vacation. View our lodging options and modern amenities on our website at bodinesresort.com and stay in touch with us on Facebook at Bodine's Resort. Welcome back to Bayfield County Wild. We're starting the new year fresh with some amazing events and activities to enjoy this month. So what are some of your favorites, Mary? So again, of course, lots of fun things happening in January in Bayfield County, including more skiing. We start off with the North End Snowshoe Classic Snowshoe Race down at the North End Trailhead in Capel. That's an awesome little trail system down there. And then we have Ulu glass blowing classes that are continuing through January 12th. So that's your last opportunity this season to get some glass blowing under your belt, uh, which is really awesome. We've got a freeze your buns ice fishing contest at the Birch <laughs> Grove Campground in Iron River on January 11th. And that's the same weekend as the Slay and Cutter Rally at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center. And also the Lost Nation String Band live at the Harborview Event Center in Washburn. Um, so that's a big weekend. And then January 14th, we have the Zoomobile coming 
coming to the Great Lakes Visitor Center and their focus is animals underground. That is such a popular thing. People love coming to the Zoomobile at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center. And then January 16th, uh, Just the Bear Facts. And <laughs> that <laughs> that is a talk from uh, Scott Walter, a large carnivore specialist also at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center. And let me and guess, that's just about bears? I think that's probably the focus of it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, a Snowfest Pond Hockey Tournament at Lakewoods Resort on January 17th, and then another ice fishing tournament on the 18th at Studemeyer's Four Seasons Resort. And then we kick off uh, one of the Berkey events, not the main event, but they have a tour. It's called the Berkey Tour on January 19th, and that's at the Berkey Ridge Trailhead. And the Berkey will be happening in February, correct? Yes, but they've really done a great job putting on smaller events or other events throughout the year. So this is one of those. Well, that's good because um, it's a great trail. It is. And it's incredible. And then January 25th and 26th, Red Cliff has their third annual winter powwow at Legendary Waters Resort and Casino. So if you didn't get to the powwow in July, this is another opportunity to come and take part in that. It's a really, really cool event. That's awesome. Um, Anything else we should know about? Just the end of the month is that Apostle Island Sled Dog Race, January 31st to February 2nd. Keep your eye out because there are other events that pop up like candlelight skis and things like that that we'll find out sometimes a little bit last minute. Right. And in that case, uh, where can we find more information? Um, you can, of course, check TravelBayfieldCounty.com on our events page and also on our Facebook page. Okay. So what are we talking about next month? So next month, we're talking about everything ice. We're talking about ice caves, ice fishing. Cocktails on the rocks. Right? (laughs) I'm sure we'll cover that, Nancy. Okay, okay. And we'll look forward to that. (laughs) Maybe we'll have to enjoy one during our recording. About ice. (laughs) Right? (laughs) All right. Thank you so much, Mary. And to everyone listening, if you like what you've heard today, Please, if you can, take a moment to share, review, and subscribe to Bayfield County Wild. If there's anything you'd like to know about today's episode, we'll have the links and resources available in our show notes. On behalf of Mary and myself, thank you for listening to Bayfield County Wild. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.